strongly believe that we can get the vast majority of our students, in fact, I almost, almost say every single child, to grade level, if we do some simple things. That is, one, we have them read, read, and read. And that was the problem with what I was doing with the traditional guided reading. I found that the children simply weren't reading enough, and it was just way too much talk on my part, way too much time where the children were simply listening, or sometimes I had to talk to children about paying attention, focusing. I know a lot of you out there can relate to that completely. So I said to myself, how do I maximize the reading? So I thought about guided reading, great approach, and how do I adapt guided reading? And that's what I did. And then it just dawned on me, why not have children work on their own? So he's somersaulted. Somersaulted. somersaulted in the air. Then he changed directions to dodge into the trees below. He had escaped and not a moment too soon. Too soon. My role is simply to do the side-by-side -side teaching, and the reading is pitched at their level. It's right there. They're scaffolded beautifully. I will determine if they need familiar reading. I will determine what, uh, what level they're on in regards to my assessments, and then they get choice because they will be given a, a books at that level, and they will just move forward. So my role is to teach them some basic strategies, some basic word identification strategies, and some basic problem solving strategies to help them move forward. Because yeah. I think what Liam's doing is he wants the reading to make sense, which is the most important thing about reading. He also looks at the words as well and really looks at them and then sometimes says the sounds and that helps him too because he's thinking about what makes sense and what looks right. Very good, Liam. Okay, keep it up, but he does a great job. Okay, let's see what happens now. Cohen, uh, on the next page, can you read, use your eyes, okay? You don't need your finger unless you are stuck. About two and a half years ago, I left a tri-district uh, literacy position uh, to go back and do learning support. And the question I asked myself was this, what is possible? And it's a question I keep asking myself every day that I come to work. How can I apply what I know about early literacy intervention and start to make a difference with children from grade one to grade five in a small group situation? Char sure, is a really good try, Cody. Can you try that again? Do you see something that might help you? Okay, well, remember you have an A, so you have two choices. You're either gonna go A or A. Try A, she, got it. Share. So I started out by doing traditional guided reading, and guided reading is an excellent way to get children to learn about reading and the strategies that they are able to use. I think it's a great intervention in the classroom. However, what I discovered that traditional guided reading for the work I was doing in intervention just was not moving the children quickly enough in regards to acceleration. And there's something else I thought, I said, okay, so if this is my role, then how do I maximize it on task behavior? And then it dawned on me, reading buddies. So what I've done right now in every single one of my intervention groups, I bring in a buddy, a tutor, an older child. I'm very careful because that particular person only comes in once a week. I don't want the work they do with me to jeopardize their actual schooling in the classroom. So it's just once a week and I have found them to be invaluable. He was recognized, recognized a part of the courtyard, courtside, that he had seen country. Parents have been really excited that the children are helping in a positive capacity. Teachers also very much support it, and I see it many ways. One is great leadership for the children. They're giving back to the community. The word I use a lot, or the phrase, is we're a community of learners and we all help out each other. When children are in grade one, the first starting to read, I believe that having them reread a lot of familiar books is really important. But my caution is we can't overdo it because the difference between a new book and a familiar book actually is not that bad. I find sometimes it, for grade one, it could be a matter of three or four new words and that's it. And if the reading is pitched exactly where it needs to be, uh, it, usually most children can take that on board very, very well. 
I found with the older children, to force them to do a lot of familiar reading, they kind of resist, and in some ways I don't blame them, they just want to explore that new story. I think familiar reading has a place with older children, there's no question, they can go back and read a piece, read a chapter, even read a page, or even read a paragraph to see how smooth we can make that reading. I think the key is, if the reading is pitched at a level they can handle, and I think that's really, really important. Of course, when we read out loud for the first time, the reading is not going to sound as smooth as what we hope. How quick it is. Uh oh, we have a problem, don't we? As oh, they drive, as they drove nice down fix the up, hill, good looking. They pass the black Towards the end of a level with some children, I say to them, okay, before we move on to the next level, I want you to pick six books that you have read that you think you can read really, really well. It's your choice, your smoothest books, and they will pick half a dozen books and they will reread those. And then once they've reread those, I'll ask them the question, do you think you're ready to move on? And of course they always say yes, and I always say to them, why? Why do you think you're ready to move on? And then they'll start to talk about the strategies that they're now employing um, that will help them move forward. Okay, Oliver, what was good about your reading? I was reading smoothly and didn't make many errors. Good, and if you didn't make an error, you fixed it up, right? Good for you. Would you agree, Lachlan? He's doing really well, isn't he? The other piece um, that I decided to really push was the word work. So at the end of every session, we do about five to seven uh, minutes of word work where I take the words right from the books and I start with a particular word, I like the word man, and I'll build that up. Man, make man say can, make man say brand, make brand say grand, make grand say grand, grand mother, we just build up, build up, build up. So it's word building. So we've done that and I think that has worked really, really well. The question that's come up a lot is pull out versus in class. So what you saw in this video was pull out, but you also saw, think about Ellington 60s, you also saw a tremendous amount on task behavior. Uh, you saw myself as I walked around this room, you saw me do the assessment piece, the testing piece that Ellington talks about. Because every time a child reads, I'm thinking, okay, where do I need to go with that particular child in terms of directing uh, my, my instruction for them? So it's interesting because people know what goes on in here, and whatever happens in here, it's easy to transfer over into a classroom because they're just, they're reading. So it's as easy as that. There's nothing magical that happens in this room. There are no magic bullets. There's no secret formula. They are reading, and that's easy to transfer in the classroom.